Oh, come on. Why is it that as soon as I get in front of the camera, it all goes to hell in a handbasket? Hi, my name's Deb Marnie, and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chainmail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? I'm so pleased to see you here today. Thanks for popping in and spending some of your time with me. So today I've got the first kit for our March Mail Club subscription box. This one's called Captured Aura and it is based on the Aura 4 weave. All right guys, let's get into it. Okay, so here's a sample piece of the bracelet we've we'll been making up today. Popping up on the side here are the list of materials that you will need to make this bracelet. Now this is about a 20 centimeter or eight inch in length. Obviously you'll just need to adjust that to whatever length that you require. So as you can see, it uses the Aura 4 units with a Rivoli capture in the middle. Okay, so we're going to start by doing the captured unit first. So that's the piece that sits in the middle. And to do that, you want to close up eight of your small rings. Okay, and once you've closed eight of those up, Grab one of your large rings and feed them onto that ring. Oops. And then once you've got them all on that ring, close your large ring up. Okay, and your work should look like this. Then you want to take up a medium ring. and feed that through two of those small rings. Close it up. And then we want to double that medium ring. Okay. All right. And we want to do that, repeat that all the way around the bracelet until we've got four pairs of medium rings placed. So just go to the next uh, pair of small rings and add your medium rings to that. And then on to the next pair. One more pair to go. Okay, so your work should look like this now. And then what we want to do is we want to take out one of those small pieces of chain okay flip the end pair of rings so you've got one on each side pinch it all the way up against your weave like this and then we want to make sure we give that a really good tug so that it sits like this and then while we keep that in position we want to do that with the next chain on our piece so fold those end ones over and then give it a good tug so that they both sit up like that. And our next ring is going to want to feed through these two here. Okay, so taking up another small ring, we want to feed it through those two small rings there that I just showed you. Okay, so straight through there like that. Close that ring up. Okay, and we want to do that same maneuver all the way around our piece. So go around to the next one. Fold those end rings all the way back. Pull 
pull them, separate out the small rings, pull them up so your work looks like this. Then grabbing another open small ring, we're going to feed it through those two small rings that are sitting next to each other. We're going to close that up and we're going to move around again. We're going to fold our last pair of rings back. Make sure we pull them up. Now because this is the last pair to fold back, it might be a bit trickier to get it all to sit next to each other and play nicely. So you just might need to adjust things around a little bit. And then once you've got that in place, take out another small ring and capture them all in, lock them all in place. Okay, and then we've just got to place one more small ring over here. We don't need to fold anything back because they've all been done. So we just take up another open small ring and grab those two rings there and hold it in place. So this is our unit, which is looking quite loose at the moment. And that's perfectly okay, guys, because we've still got to put um, our Rivoli in. But this is a, a basic Aura 4 unit like that. All right, so to prepare to put the um, Rivoli in, because we're going to lift these rings here on top and we're going to slip the Rivoli in underneath. But to help keep it in place, we're just going to place a couple of locking rings. So we're just going to grab, sorry, two of our tiny rings. So this is the tiniest ones that we've got. And we want to doesn't matter which ones you start with, but we want to join two of these top medium rings together. Okay, so just there like that. Go through two of the medium rings and close. And then take up another tiny ring and join the next lot up. Next lot of medium rings together there. Okay, so that we've got two of our four locking rings in place. So we're starting to create our cage in here. Okay. Now this is going to get a bit, a bit thummy, a bit, my thumbs may get in the way here. But basically all I'm going to do is take this little Swarovski. So this is about the 8mm, which I think in the Swarovski code is an SS39. Um, they do come in a range, but they're about approximately eight millimeters. Okay, so you've got your two locking rings in place here. And what we want to do is take up our little Rivoli. We want to try and open up this cage where we're going to put it in a little bit. And we're going to slip that Rivoli into the cage, making sure that it sits underneath those two initial locking rings that we put into place. So I'm just going to open that cage up as best I can. Slip that Rivoli in. Now this ring here isn't sitting quite right so I'm just going to try and get it to come up. Make sure the Rivoli is sitting underneath our two tiny rings. go it's popped into position for us finally and then I want to replace two more tiny rings in here now you have to be very careful that you uh, don't drop this and that you have to start all over again so very very carefully place your third 
wedding ring. And then one more. In there like that. Okay. So we've got that in there, but as you can see, the unit is still a little loose. So we're just going to tighten that up now by doubling up these small rings that are here. And we just do that by going just through the same path that the uh, rings that are already in weave follow. So place four of those into your weave. and that will help tighten it all up a little bit for you. Okay, one more. And there you go, everything is uh, a little bit tighter. So that's the captured unit finish. So we can set that aside now and work on the making the bracelet. Okay, so we're going to start on the units for the bracelet. Now the technique is the same to make the basic unit. There are a couple of different ring sizes, so make sure you're aware of those. Um, before we start. So as before take up six of your small rings, close those up and pop them onto one of your large rings and then we want to take up our medium ring and feed it through two of the small and then we want to double that up as we did before and we want to repeat that all the way around um, work until we've placed four pairs of our medium rings. Okay, so you just go ahead and do that. So as I said, this is exactly the same as a captured unit, only this time we're using slightly uh, different sized rings and um, we don't need to put that tricky Rivoli in the middle, so it makes it a lot easier. I designed uh, this one so that the, or the ring I chose to put in the middle of this unit um, is one that can be swapped out for an anodized aluminium ring. So if you want to put a colour in that matches your Rivoli, you can do that. It doesn't look too bad. I quite like the, um, the, the plain silver, the bright aluminium look. Uh, but if you like a little bit more colour in your piece, then that's one way definitely that you can add the colour. And you could also, if you wanted to, swap out the uh, small rings as well for um, anodized aluminium rings. Totally up to you guys. All right, so once you've got your four pairs of the medium rings placed, again, we're going to grab one of those chains. We're going to flip them all the way over like that. And then we're going to make sure that we pull those medium rings upwards so our work sits like this. And we want to do that twice. So holding on to the ones that we've just flipped back, we move on to our next ones and we do the same thing. Okay, so you now got two pairs of chains with their rings flipped back and we want to place uh, one of our locking rings here. So our first locking ring is going to be one of our small rings. So you just take up another small ring and feed it through those two there. Now this is where it varies slightly from um, our other unit. When we go to our next chain and flip it back and we want to lock these two in place, we don't use a small ring, we use a tiny ring. Okay. And we lock that in place with one of our tiny rings. And then we move on to the next unit, 
fold it all the way back, bring them up, just put the pliers down, I'm getting all Kerfuffle to us, I said, when you fold this last unit back, things are a little bit tighter, so it might be a little bit trickier for you. Just need to wiggle everything into place. It'll get there eventually. Apparently mine is being stubborn. So we just want to separate out those ones. We want to bring out our medium rings up. Okay. Hopefully you won't have as much trouble as I currently am. All right, it is a bit of a tight squeeze, but there we go, we've got it. And we want to use a small ring this time as our locking. So we put a small ring in there. Okay, so we've got a small ring, a small ring, and a tiny ring. And we're not going to place our fourth one at this stage. We're going to leave it like that. And we're going to create uh, one more unit. So exactly the same way, close up eight of your small rings, pop them onto a large ring. Add your medium pairs. Um, as we did before. So we've got our large ring locked into place. We're then going to grab our mediums, pick up two, double that up, and repeat that all the way around your piece until you have placed four pairs of medium rings. Feed our last medium ring through those two smalls. Okay. And as before, we take up one chain, we separate it out, we fold it all the way back, and then we pull up our medium rings like that do it for the next chain that is in the piece. Okay, fold them all the way back, pull them up. So you've got two like this. So then we want to take up a small ring and we want to lock those in place as we have been doing. Okay. Now when we place our next ring, we're not going to do one here like we did before. We're going to miss that one. So we're going to go to our other uh, pairs of loose rings. We're going to fold that first one back. And that's a really bad join there. Let me fix that. Okay. All right, so we're going to fold it all the way back. Pop it up. Okay, and with the other one, fold it all the way back and pop it up as well. Okay, as I said, it's a bit trickier. This last one, you might need to wiggle things around a little bit to get it all to sit nicely. We've just about got it and just when I think I've just about got it everything moves so be careful not to let it go this last one is quite tricky guys there we go I think I've just about got it Alright, 
So we've got all those rings folded over. Now we've put one locking ring here. We want to put one directly across from it. We're not putting ones on the side yet. And to do that, we just take up another one of our small rings and we lock it in place with a small ring. Okay, so we've now got two units, one that's got three locking rings and one that's got two locking rings. You can continue to make, you can join these up together now or you continue to make some more of these. We need a total of five of these units with just the two locking per side, okay? I'm just going to show you how we join these up now. So we've got our two units here. I'm going to take up a tiny ring. So you're going to need your finest nosed pliers for this. Taking up one of those units, so I've just taken up the one that's got the two rings on it. I'm going to go to one of the side spots that we haven't locked into place yet. And I'm going to feed my tiny ring into that. And then picking up the other unit. And I'm going to continue to feed that tiny ring through the appropriate space on the other unit. Okay, and then I'm going to close that ring up. Okay, so your work should look like this. Now, unfortunately, this has slipped a little bit. We'll worry about that ring there that's flipped around in a minute. Okay, so our work looks like this. We've got that join there. Now we want to place a small ring here and a small ring here to finish locking all our rings down. Okay, so take up a small ring, feed it through both pairs of medium rings on each unit. Okay, so it looks like that. Flip it around and do the same on the other side. And you just continue to join those all your units together like that until you've got a total of six units or, or however many units you need on um, your side of, of one side and then you'll need to make another strip of the Aura 4 chain for the other side of your bracelet. So as you can see, it is a little unstable um, until you start locking all of these into place. So you do have to be a little vigilant with your um, units. So it just pays to note that these rings will flip a little bit out. I've never found the Aura units to be all that stable. I haven't had much uh, success in that regard. Once you sort of put these extra locking rings into place, then there will not be as much tendency for your rings to flip. So go ahead and add the rest of your uh, units together, just like that, until you've got, as I said, a total of two sets of six of, of the Aura 4 chain made up. Um, you go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here to show you the next steps. Okay, so you've got your strip of Aura 4 done with your six units in length or whatever it is that you need. And now we want to attach this to our uh, captive or a captive unit. So we're just going to take up a uh, one of our small rings so this is the bracelet sized small rings. We go through the end pair of rings like that. Now you'll notice that I don't have a small locking ring here on the end of my bracelet. I chose to do that because I felt it clashed too much with the um, captured unit. If it doesn't worry you and you want a little bit more stability in your weave, then by all means stick a tiny sized uh, ring in there. But anyway, we go through the pair of medium and then we go through one pair of these corner rings here we close that up and we do that on the other side okay 
So it just looks like that. And we just do exactly the same for our other section of chain. So we take up a small ring, we go through the medium ring and then through the rings there on the corner of our captured unit. We'll do the same on the other side. Okay, and then to finish um, our bracelet off, I'm going to lock down uh, the edges here a little bit more. So I'm going to take uh, a medium ring. So you see we've got a tiny ring. I'm going to go through, oh sorry, I'm going to take up this small ring. I'm going to go through the medium ring and into the tiny ring. Okay, and close that up. That just helps lock that pair, last pair of medium rings into place. And then for clasp attachment, I take up another small ring, feed my lobster clasp onto it, and just put it through a tiny ring like that and then on the other end of the bracelet you just need to do the same thing to lock the medium rings into place but then just place a single ring to close your clasp onto and that's it guys that's your finished captured aura bracelet all right guys well that's it that's the video tutorial today um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you're happy with your new bracelet. If you are happy, don't forget to give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. Share the video if you like. Leave any comments or questions you may have down below the video. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, think about hitting the subscribe button. And uh, don't forget to check out some of the videos that we have on our channel as well as giving our store link up here a little bit of love, guys. That's where we sell all the bits and bobs and you know what's that you need to make this particular bracelet and quite a lot of, of, of others. <laughs> all right, guys, time for me to finish up. I'll see you again sometime in the very near future. Bye.